Hello everybody, uh, my name is Richard and I work at MariaDB. Uh, specific specifically, I'm a software engineer uh, on the monitoring team at SkySQL. Um, and recently I've been asking that question myself again. I'm torturing myself with that question again. Why no SQL? Why no SQL? Um, and I think various reasons kind of come at you. So maybe, maybe you, you do have a specific data set problem. Maybe there's something out there uh, that fits your data need. Um, but I'm not, I wasn't too convinced about that. I've, yeah, there must be other reasons. Um, maybe you're uh, into memes. You follow the meme. It, it, no SQL scales. Of course it is. It's, it's, it's web scale. Um, maybe you've been looking at what other people have been doing and seeing what they're interested in, uh, seeing whether the trends are laying um, or going. Maybe you prefer your technological discussions uh, and technological requirements and recommendations to come from needlessly nested uh, arguments and comment threads on social media. Uh, or maybe you take your tech, tech recommendations through interpreted dance. Uh, if you do that, um, this talk is definitely for you. I will, be no, I, will, I will do no dancing, I promise you that. Maybe on another video. Um, so I thought, you know, for why no SQL? It's good to have an example project. Um, and for those of you um, familiar with Pi Game or the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, may have seen this before. And uh, it's a project called Clo Code the Classics. Um, and if you've ever done any sort of programming before, and perhaps an exercise you've done is to recreate an existing tool like um, grep or cat inside your new language of choice or something new you're learning, um, it's quite a common exercise. Um, this is instead having a go at making old classics like uh, Space Invaders and these old kind of games. Um, and I thought, yeah, I, 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 I could do that. Let's have a little play with that. Um, uh, and I got to a point where I thought, well, this game code is quite complex, um, but they all have something in common. I'm sure some of you may have remembering typing in your three lettered names or initials in arcade machines when you've wanted to record your high score. Very important. You must be known for alternative uh, that this is your high score in Mortal Kombat 2 um, on the pub arcade machine. I was thought, well, I'd, I'd quite like to record my old, a high score in some of these old games. Um, uh, I'll give you an example of that in a second. Uh, and in fact, let's have a quick look at the sum of the code. Um, let's go. Uh, so there's a few games in here. Uh, one was like a Space Invaders. One was like a Bubble Bubble. If anyone remembers these things, but this one's um, this one was a little simpler uh, because the, the 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 death loop was quicker, and I could fail quicker, which helps the example today. Uh, it's called Banner, and I'll show it to you an example in a second. I thought, well, this game code is actually pretty complex. Do I really want to be importing SQL Alchemy or writing a Django backend? I just want to write the high score to some kind of database somewhere. But I'm not going to use any of this complex, messy SQL stuff. I can't do that. This is complex enough. I can't. Surely I can't add anything like that. So I thought, I know. I know what would be easier than learning SQL using a database. I'm going to write my own database, my own database, specifically a key value database, and I've called it KVDB. Uh, it's been around for a little while and I've used it uh, in a few home projects here and there. Uh, but, you know, who wants to learn something where you can just write something from scratch? Uh, so no peeking in the meantime, you know, I'll, I'll take you through what's what's uh, what's happening next. Uh, so what is KVDB? Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, First of all, or, or rather, how have I implemented it? What, what, I've, what have I done with it? Well, I import my little library, uh, KVDB. So I've just, I just added in like a few lines of code to this already very complex game. Uh, and in fact, I'll give you a quick demo of the game first. Maybe this will give a bit more insight. Python 3, Bunner. Let's run it. There we go. Oh, there we go. And this is great. And um. And I have to get the little bunny rabbit across the road. Uh, oh, and I got a score of four. Okay, I'll try, I'll try that again. Okay, I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched this poor rabbit die. Okay, three. Okay, uh, I've got a high score of 95, it seems, uh, which is in the top right hand corner. Um, I've got no idea how I did that. Okay, always watch for trains, left and right, kids. Okay, so that's an example of the game. So there's a score and there's a high score. I'd like to record that. 
uh, and in this implementation, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm adding two lines of code. Can you believe this? Two lines of code to my database, uh, to my game, and I'm now storing these uh, these uh, things inside the database, and I'll prove it to you as well inside my very own key value database. Uh, so db equals kv.db, and I've I've uh, in in kvdb I have collections, and this collection is called game scores uh, scores, uh, and if I just look for db dot put one command uh, when I get to the game over state uh, db dot put I call the key bunner because that's the name of the game and uh, in a dictionary Python dictionary score game dot score and I've got a score let's have a see let's really see what that looks like I've got a REPL open and I've done exactly the same statements over here I've imported kvdb db equals kvdb game stores uh, and then if I do a db dot get there's my high score in the database. I did it. I've, I've recorded my, my score. It's not a high score, but it's a score. Um, let's try that again. Let's run the game again. Let's see if I can get a higher score than six for this example. This is where the pressure really, really comes. Like, can I get a score higher than six? Oh my word. Are the logs on my side today? Oh, 11. That'll do. Off you go. Yeah, game over. I've seen that game over screen far too many times this week um, let's have a look let's do a db.get 13 hmm did I get 13? I thought I got 11 hmm maybe I was a bit too quick to quit it I'll do that again actually I'm not convinced by that am I just adding scores somewhere am I am I going to become the new King Kong champion by just injecting my own code somewhere Donkey Kong not King Kong 23. Oh. Roads are very dangerous. 23. Yeah, I must have just... I must have just been too hasty. All that code and coffee. Oh. Oh, that's very cold. Um, this isn't that good. Because in my key value database, I keep overwriting the same key with just my current score. So that's not very good. Um... I did come up with this very simple solution. <coughs> so the problem here is <coughs> I'm overwriting the same key with the same score. So a little simple solution. Uh, I started to let's go to the top of the file. Generate a string UUID just using the UUID library. Um, if I go back to that line, which is at 956, um, <clears throat> I'll create a game key, uh, which is unique. So the name of the game, and then maybe my unique key as well. See if, see if this looks a uh, game ID. See how that looks. Oops. Oh, not now. Uh, <clears throat> oh, please go away. Um, let's try running that and let's see what happens now. Okay. So I had a unique key before. And now this should have a separate session ID. Or oh, 14, I think. Not too bad. Let's try dbget again. <clears throat> there we go. I now have two key value entries. Bunner and Bunner with this string ID. Not too bad. And I can keep adding on to the keys as well. Uh, if I was using the uh, old key. Uh, let's say. Let's I tell you what, let's, re let's record this a high score as well. Um, so then I can see at the time what the high score was. If uh, a current high score. So this is, the, this is the beauty of a key value database. Why no SQL? Because it's so easy. It's so easy. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to add high score now. No, no messy tables or SQL. God. Oh, I need to run the game again. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, four, four. Yes, I did not hit this, but I know the high score is 95. So let's see how. Uh, uh, that got 
Uh, there we go. So now I've got an extra key in here. Uh, and another key value within my keys. Within my key values, I've got key values, which are, of course, uh, Python dictionaries, Python dictionaries, within Python dictionaries, within Python, Python dictionaries. Brilliant database design. I'm so glad I didn't jump into that messy database stuff, which people keep telling me telling me all about. No SQL is the future. Look, no SQL at all. And now I can just write what I want to where I want. Uh, so I've got current high score, 95. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I can also um, uh, let's have it. Let's, let's have it. So that's that's quite easy. I've, I've got two lines um, inside the file, um, and I can also like play around with unique keys and things, uh, and I can update scores. In fact, if I now I've had that unique key, what if I started overwriting the old key as well? I, as, considering I've added these extra fields, um, so the so the old key will get updated. So it's, currently it's got a score of 23. I'm um, just going to append the high score over it. So whatever happens, it will just overwrite that key because uh, it's it's simple. It's simple. Diddle -diddle -diddle, let's go for a swim. Perfect. Oh, 11 again. This poor bunny. There we go. So the original key bunner got updated with a score of 11. Current high score, 95. Which is true. I might never touch that 95 again. I think after today, I think I really need to give this rabbit a break. Um, <clears throat> but um, let's have a look at all the some of the ingredients that go into um, KVDB. Let's have a look at this library then. Why why did I create this and what's going on? Um, <clears throat> well, I have the code open. Let's have a little look at it. Oh, oh, this is my library KVDB. But I'm importing the MariaDB Python connector. Or MariaDB connect to Python. That's right. It was actually MariaDB the whole time. I mean, I think that would be. I and mean, that's what you'd expect. If you if you're gonna join MariaDB Server Fest, I wouldn't start showing you another database. <laughs> look at it. I'm using MariaDB and the Python connector. And let's see. Let's look at some of the magic here. In my init, in my init function, uh, init, init method for the class KVDB, or DB rather. Um, I'm actually creating a table with a JSON type, uh, and this is my infinitely extensible uh, data type where I could just put everything in and start pushing it off, uh, and without a care in the world. As long as my keys are unique, it doesn't matter. Uh, and if I go back to some of these methods I was using, so I was using put. Um, uh, there's a put, um, so I insert into my KV values uh, on duplicate, just update the key, nice and easy, take all the pain away from me, um, and the JSON set uh, function on there as well. Uh, and it's worth reading through all the JSON functions, there's lots there. Um, I'll be talking about some of those uh, and the JSON tables a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> and I've just got my... Uh, the, the, get, the, get, the get is a little bit more complicated, um, as I have to... Um, Sort of unmunge and unmarshal string to JSON uh, as I'm effectively um, getting a JSON string. Uh, the, the, the data type uh, JSON is stored as text in MariaDB, uh, and you could index it if you want. Uh, and then I'm pulling, I'm unmarshing it as JSON and into a, a dictionary in Python, so I've got something native to use as well. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, for my environment, I'm just putting and getting, I'm putting dictionaries in and values in, and I'm getting uh, values out. So um, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, so why no SQL? Um, people talk about the the issues of scale and complexity and setting up systems and, and easy setup and things. Um, and I don't know many that are actually as easy as MariaDB. Um, uh, but I think a lot of people gloss over the fact that uh, at the end of the day, you've still got developers interacting with your systems and they're importing drivers and libraries. Um, and I made this um, abstraction, this toy abstraction. Do not use this in production. Goodness me, do not use this in production. But it just goes to show you, you know, I, I could just do a few things. I could just do a, there we go. I've set up my table and in my init script, I've hidden all that complexity away, creating a table, creating a database. Um, and then my 956 line, uh, I've just got my one thing I want to put. Uh, I think ideally this would be an asynchronous push to a different backend, which then handled the complexity again. Um, and this is, this is the kind of 
uh, thing that I kind of see when uh, people say why no SQL. I say well because it, it's it's simple for people. You're already managing data and collections inside your code base. It doesn't matter if it's Java or Python, Ruby, C, or, um, C, uh, C sharp or something. Um, uh, you're still adding complexity to your code base when you when you add more systems. Um, and no SQL. That 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 trend definitely um, took away some of that complexity. Um, but as I'm trying to prove here, um, you can absolutely hide that. Do it, do it once, do it well. It doesn't matter if you use an ORM um, or make your own mad abstraction there like this. You can, you can still make life good for you and and keep it repeatable. Um, and people might even come up to you and say, "Hey, ask you." And the code base say, "Hey, what's what's this? Where's it going?" I say, "Oh, it's going to a data, a regular database." So how do you do that? Just a little bit of uh, abstraction. Um, <clears throat> and you can still hand, move all your common problems and error handling to a different part of your backend or a framework or library that you import elsewhere. Uh, let's have a look at this inside the database just to prove it. Just to prove it, MariaDB um, show schemas. I've got one called KVDB. So use um, show tables in here. So this is where the name of the collection came in. What well, I was calling that the collection game scores. If I just select a star from game scores, see there we go, there's all the rows. Uh, you'll notice the um, uh, IDs are a little bit high currently on the auto increment. Um, uh, in this little library I also added um, system versioning so I could do... Uh, the idea was when you do have a uh, single key, import kvdd, Ta da database connection. See, easy peasy. Uh, let's do a uh, dot get. Uh, I could specify a when equals last, and I think I could do a for just that bunner key, uh, not buffer. Goodness me. There we go. So that's the last one. Or I can do all iterations on that key. There we go. So what what is that? What am I looking at? So as I said earlier, the, the problem with writing a single key to a key value database is you've only got one key to update. And I'm handling that with an update replace in MariaDB, but uh, I'm still maintaining all the history using system versioning. Let's have a quick look at that. In fact, I could show you the, the code uh, and where that looks. So I just add this little string to the end of my create table statement. Create table, if not exists, the name of the table. Uh, so it's kvdb.collection name, game scores, and I've added system versioning. So even though I've been overwriting one key over and over again for, for, for that first part of the program in the end, uh, I've still got all the history for it. I can still go get it back. Um, people with, um, uh, I would never use this in like a transaction environment. I mean, why, why, why keep overwriting one key the whole time when you can just keep appending? Uh, then you've got the full history as well. Uh, but it adds for an interesting notion. Um, you can also show the history of any key to see if there was any uh, issues in your um, or any row. Uh, if there's any issues that were the kind of a uh, weird update came along, or um, perhaps perhaps someone's updated something they shouldn't have when they should be using some kind of a append methodology rather than um, updating existing keys. Mark mark a row is deleted, then add another one afterwards. Um, but that's that's just the, that's just semantics of whatever your application or your data model is, or however that's supposed to go together. Um, so why no SQL? It was, it was convenient at the time, um, but there's no reason why we can't keep making things convenient for ourselves still. Um, the ingredients I put into this, uh, Python, that's 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 quite an obvious one. What kind of put this all together? Um, MariaDB, of course. It was a total ruse. I didn't make my own database. That'd be ridiculous. I just use a really good one instead. MariaDB connect to Python. Um, a great addition to the connector roundup. Um, I use it often. Love MariaDB, love Python, as you can probably tell. Uh, enjoying it. Uh, JSON functions. Um, recently in 10.6, uh, they were touting JSON tables, which is a different thing. JSON functions have been around since 10.2.3 in various um, styles and versions. Uh, D different things kind of pulled it. Uh, there's d different things have been, have been added. Uh, so go look at the JSON functions uh, uh, page in, docu in the documentation. You'll see if you're running like 10.6 now, 10.5, 10.6, most of them are there for you. Um, JSON tables is something new <clears throat> where you can represent a store 
JSON as a table, uh, which is different to dynamic columns um, and virtual columns. Uh, but yeah, this is just JSON functions. Uh, and the beauty of JSON functions is compared to J JSON tables is I can just start adding it to any existing table. And, that, and that's all I've done in this in this project is I've got a table with a, with a key, which is a, a column called K, which is my key. Um, and that's got an index on it. And then I've got a value. Um, and that's where I just keep my JSON value. And I can marshal, unmarshal it. Uh, serialize, deserialize over the wire using the connector in and out of Python dictionaries. Easy peasy. Um, so, that, so JSON functions when you want to add or not not just have like a one and done uh, solution. System version tables. This appeared in temp, MariaDB 10.3.4. Um, great. Love this feature. I'd, I'd seen it elsewhere before, uh, so I'm really happy. We've got temporal data uh, methodologies here now. Um, MariaDB dump recently got updated with the ability to have like a, a dump as so you don't have to take the whole table uh, and, and all the versions uh, in a logical dump you can take um, just a, speci a specific time stamp timeline or time frame um, and, that, and that's that's been, that's been very interesting um, and a good, a good addition as well it, it gives you more flexibility uh, I, I still use I still see MariaDB a dump um, a MySQL dump used in uh, ETL pipelines um, further reading and watching, um, you know, JSON doesn't just end here, uh, and NoSQL and, and flexible data types don't end here as well. Um, so as I said, JSON tables came out, and that's a different thing. Um, Sergey did a great talk uh, in FOSDEM early this year, JSON support, news on news in the bigger picture, and he dives more into like uh, the functions and functionality around um, uh, JSON document pass and values, and and what the future holds for things like optimizers. Uh, how the optimizer is going to handle things. That's 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 a great talk, lot very in depth. Um, the max scale no SQL listener, and there's um, an example below from my colleague Robert uh, from Developer Relations. Uh, this is a talk in its own, uh, and this is providing MongoDB compatibility uh, on the wire via max scale, uh, and it's well worth a watch. Uh, and, a, and a listen and a read. Uh, so if you've already got, if you've perhaps already made that terrible mistake, you said why no, no SQL, why not? And you chose something with a document DB, uh, document uh, document DB in it, and you've already got the MongoDB protocol everywhere around your codebase. Uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, th there's also been uh, stories before on our on our commercial blog with about uh, MongoDB migrations. Uh, so it is happening, um, and it does happen. Uh, MariaDB isn't the only target for uh, MongoDB migrations, but at least, you know, uh, also uh, 10.6 Enterprise and things like this, you know, more Oracle support, Sybase ASE, SQL, Any uh, Sybase SQL Anywhere. Um, there was some TDS, uh, MS SQL, ASE things in previous versions, uh, compatibility, and now uh, MongoDB wire protocol at the max scale level. This is providing people a lot of flexibility. Um, so hey, if, if you're still enjoying like the MongoDB libraries, but you want a better database on the back end, not a bad way of doing it. Uh, dynamic columns, as I said as well, I think this deserves another talk. Uh, if you want that flexibility in your schema, being able to like add new data types, um, and you just want to extend the SQL a bit without, provide, uh, without um, uh, doing any extra database migrations and handling more DDL and rollbacks, dynamic columns is a great thing to look at. Um, but it's a talk on its own, and it also means that all the data will come back as result sets in, in Python as, as row-based result sets, uh, and not um, uh, it won't be like JSON um, that comes back. It, it, uh, as far as you're concerned, it will just be um, rows and columns, and then flexible types within them. Um, and that and that's it. Um, so yeah, I, I hope I answered that question not just for myself, but other people as well. Why no SQL? Because I think it was a win for developers. Um, um, and I hope I hope I've proven that um, uh, it could be just as easy for us as well on the on the relational database side. And MariaDB is definitely proving that. Scale to the moon, infinite types or no types. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope you're all doing well. Okay, hi Richard. Uh, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you very much for 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 all this presentation and and 
and explaining me a bit more about NoSQL and, and all these Python connectors. I am more on the on the operate, operational side than developer, so uh, this is more the scaling uh, stuff that will interest me. But um, so you sp you spoke in your in your presentation about uh, the fact that this is not ready for production. Um, what would you suggest? What would you? Uh, what are your uh, advices uh, for? Uh, I don't know, uh, creating a, a challenge, a worldwide challenge on Bunny Bunny game. <laughs> worldwide challenge um i touched on <laughs> if i could do the 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 uh the the talk again i'd probably focus on um uh distributing data over more tables um to avoid collisions and stop overwriting and reduce the load on uh perhaps where you're building your views um but your models or controllers or data ingest models might be happening somewhere else it's okay to keep appending to a table as long as you keep it Keep data unique. That's that's an easy kind of scale technique. Just append, depend, depend. Uh, don't worry about inserts or updates. Um, sorry, um, updates or deletes. You just keep inserting yeah. uh, and then push it out somewhere else uh, later. Um, I think this is the kind of the the, the beauty of um, some of the JSON functions and NoSQL. It's it's great that we can kind of keep kind of keep compacting onto a single uh, document object model and keep expanding it and not worrying about. Um, uh, the types or the values and the names of the fields and things, you know, we can deal with that later. Whilst we're at least scaling, uh, uh, particularly whilst we're uh, dealing with uh, multiple languages in multiple countries, um, you could just keep adding data and then do your roll up elsewhere. Um, you might have um, be dealing with uh, different Unicode, uh, d different kind of uh, character correlations or encoding, um, and just need to like just worry about it later. Okay. And, and, and about uh, any, any suggestion about um, what kind of, uh, of tuning, about uh, what kind of options uh, we should uh, maybe take care of in a, in a typical MariaDB uh, instance or a cluster uh, uh, setup uh, uh, for this kind of, uh, of data, of uh, NoSQL data? Um, I think one of the uh, I think one of the easiest solutions I've ever had to kind of dealing with help or helping to kind of like keep this transparent has been uh, Max Scale, um, mm -hmm. a great tool. And of course, I, I'd like to I, I mentioned it in the talk as well. They've already offered their, their NoSQL uh, protocol on top of it, which is MongoDB compatible. So if you already were working on something, you can now go to something which will kind of take the scale a little bit better um, and at least and start offering you different data model options as well. Uh, options is really important on data. If you're kind of stuck with one model and it will only go like this and you've got no scaling options, then that's kind of it. Um, we also host MaxScale inside uh, SkySQL and whether you've got MaxScale on site or with us or both, you can start mixing these things around. At the end of the day, they're, they're just... Um, uh, protocol servers all running and understanding the MySQL MariaDB protocol. Um, so it's easy to write somewhere, put it somewhere else, um, and manage multiple data types. Um, uh, op options are good. Okay, and 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 I I just take a quick look at the, at the blog post about Max Max Scale Listener. So it it's ready for production now. So it's it's already it's already work, working and and, and yeah. ingesting yeah. no school. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm keen to see you're here uh, more for more people using it in production. Uh, for the, uh, likewise, I'm just kind of playing with it at the moment. Um, but I'm really keen to get on a project uh, using that. Okay. I think within my local user groups, we're going to play with. Um, uh, we'll probably, I'll probably start doing something like let's take a Mongo application, let's stick it on Max Scale, and let's see how far we can push it. Let's um, let's start gaining those options over the types and scale. Um, uh, and it's, it's just those extra things like, well, I could put my some data over here, and I could put some data over here, and <clears throat> I could flush caches over here and then build up my model elsewhere without impacting any other services. Um, we've, we've got that option where we can have, we've got so many different replication types in um, uh, the world, the MariaDB world now. Um, we've still got our normal asynchronous replication, synchronous replication, WAN synchronous replication with Galera, expand, of course. Um, I could I could dump data into column store and then archive off to S3 natively all without leaving MariaDB. Um, so I've got a lot of options and I can kind of now I've got ways to kind of hide that from me uh, and also the protocol to also to the client and developer level with options of max scale. But also then I could just go to um, uh, something like SkySQL if I need to um, uh, move a particular service uh, off site or into into a different region. Sorry, 
yeah okay sorry my my my, my screen went black <laughs> suddenly um okay so well that that's that's a really interesting um uh, i i think i have no more uh, no more no more questions maybe you want to 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 develop about a specific aspect about your presentation something that you you missed or something that you wanted to say <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely wish I'd, I'd touched more on on the single table for storing uh, key values. Um, so you know, you we you talked about how how do we scale these kind of services? So I've I've got options for like uh, within the MariaDB world, as I said, for like um, even WAN scaling with Galera and Expand and this kind of thing, and, and then kind of hiding those uh, with uh, uh, Max Scale. I can also just start firing up different regions in SkySQL. If I'm perhaps operating from the UK, I could start. I could just put a put a data center out in SkySQL in uh, East America or anywhere um, and then just start having to sending data there or having picking up clients there and then having another location where I, I put things but I wish I, I touched more on the um, if I was to do the talk again I'd spend more time on the um, on the, on the table model uh, like I said earlier like the append thing and then how I do a roll up um, or cherry pick the data that I, th I feel is necessary or open up the uh, that would be my opportunity to um uh start trying to enrich or do something else with the data or even just like um uh, my, uh merging data from elsewhere um i i think that's that's something um i would would like to have touched on more um okay i feel i feel like half an hour probably wasn't wasn't going to be enough for it. <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty short maybe for another another test <laughs> we could speak Absolutely. about this more more deeply well thank you very much Thank you, Faustin. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.